a self-effacing 8th grade dropout who always said he was too dumb to make things complicated, but a natural entrepreneur as a boy who transported a block of ice to New Hampshire racetrack and sold ice chips for 10 cents each, earning himself $171 in a single day. Then after working a variety of menial jobs, including working as a telegram delivery boy for Western Union when he was just 14, landed a job driving an ice cream truck before going on to start his own business and become becoming a billionaire. Who am I talking about here? The late William Rosenberg, who founded Dunkin Donuts and set it on its path to become what is now the world's largest coffee and fast food breakfast chain. Did you know that at Dunkin, you could order a different drink each day for almost 70 years? And there are 25,000 ways you can order your coffee. Pretty crazy, right? With more than 12,500 restaurants worldwide in 46 countries, including more than 9,000 restaurants in the US, this really does sound like a success story. Story. It'd be hard to overstate how important Dunkin' Donuts has been for the New Englanders in general, and Bostoners in particular. For decades, the chain's storefronts have been part of the regional landscape, pieces of infrastructure as common and essential as streetlights, crosswalks, and mailboxes. The fat white cup with the pink and gold lettering has served as a badge of office, a semi-conscious signal of one's status as a local, and the waxy paper bag full of munchkins has been a staple at countless PTA meetings, church breakfasts, and kids' soccer games. Regular customers relied on this chain so much, in fact, that we gave it a few nicknames. Dunks and Dunkies, there was Dunkin', which referred to both the chain itself and its products. You could go to Dunkin', but more often you would get Dunkin' or grab Dunkin' for yourself your co-workers, and you or your loved ones. However, here are some of the things you probably didn't know about this fast food giant. Given its long history, Dunkin' has had plenty of time to find itself embroiled in a scandal or two. In recent years, the famed coffee and donut company has experienced more than its fair share of controversies. Some have been self-inflicted by Dunkin' itself, but others have been the result of rogue franchise owners breaking rules or behaving badly. In both 2015 and 2018, Dunkin' experienced cyber attacks in which hackers gained access to customer information. Things went from bad to worse, not long after, as the company went from victim to culprit. In 2019, New York State filed a suit against Duncan for allegedly failing to respond to the attacks in a proper manner. And then there's the problem with ingredients. In 2016, Duncan announced that it would begin testing out new and enhanced egg patty, which got people curious. After all, how much could you improve upon an egg? It turns out Duncan's eggs consist of 10 ingredients, including soybean oil, cornstarch, and xanthan gum. Some of these are commonly used food additives, so you could give Duncan a pass, but the very next year, the fake ingredient accusations got dialed up. Then, in June of 2017, a New York City customer filed a lawsuit against Duncan, claiming the restaurant's Angus steak and egg sandwich wasn't made with real Angus steak, but instead an inferior product of minced meat that contains fillers and binders. Just a few months later, Duncan was hit with another ingredient-related lawsuit. This time, more than 100 people in Illinois filed a class action suit alleging Duncan used imitation blueberries in their food instead of the real thing. Duncan's scandals reached an international scandal scale in 2013 when a highly controversial ad was released in Thailand. According to the AP, the advertisement, which was used to promote a new charcoal donut, featured a woman in blackface. Needless to say, the image was deemed racist by many people. It's both bizarre and racist that Dunkin' Donuts thinks that it must color a woman's skin black and accentuate her lips with bright pink lipstick to sell a chocolate donut, said Phil Robertson, the Deputy Asia Director for Human Rights Watch. He went on to say that Dunkin' Donuts should immediately with draw the ad, publicly apologize to those it offended, and ensure this never happens again. The only thing worse for a restaurant than having your store taken over by a pack of mice is a video of said takeover going viral. But that's exactly what happened to a Boston Dunkin' location. According to Boston, in November of 2019, a passerby peeked into the window of a Maverick Square store only to see mice scurrying around. He pulled out his phone to record the critters and uploaded the videos to Facebook, where they received more than 20,000 views. One of those watching the footage was the city's inspectional services department, which launched an investigation that uncovered multiple health violations, including trash on the floor, visible grime on the ice machine, and flies in the dining area. Things quickly went from bad to worse for the location. The Duncan parent company was so outraged by the video, it sued the franchise operator. In the lawsuit, Duncan requested a judge order the management company to remove any evidence the location was once a Duncan store and pay the irreparable damage that the scandal had caused to the 
the brand. The Duncan brand also had its name sullied in 2017 thanks to some alleged unethical behavior of a politician. In December of that year, CBS reported that Massachusetts State Senator Brian Joyce was arrested and charged in a federal indictment accusing him of a range of crimes including racketeering, extortion, wire fraud, and money laundering. At the heart of the indictment was the claim that Joyce accepted bribes in exchange for political favors. One of his alleged benefactors was the owner of more than 100 Duncan franchise locations. But it hasn't been all bad, so let's leave the scandal behind. What about the donuts? Back in the day, donuts were cut by hand, which resulted in plenty of holes. Now modern machinery disperses with the rings of dough, and the holes are made separately. When Duncan started selling donut holes in 1972, the company named them Munchkins, after the Wizard of Oz characters. The company marketed the holes to kids, while the grown-ups went for the whole donuts. While coffee is clearly the heart and soul of the franchise, the donuts are just as important. Duncan sells around 2.9 billion donuts globally each year. That is a whole lot of sweet treats. Donuts may not be as trendy as the newer menu items, cold brews, breakfast sandwiches, and munchkins, but they've historically been the draw. When Duncan first opened its doors nearly 75 years ago, it offered 52 donuts. The wide array of pastries blew competitors, which typically sold only four donut types way out of the water. That donut menu's diversity remains to this day. You'll even see more types of donuts on the Duncan website now, where the company advertises over 70 different kinds, and there is a clear hierarchy of which donuts are better than others. And we have a selection of the best rated for you. First up, the Double Chocolate Donut at Duncan has an old-fashioned, sometimes also known as cake, base. With this donut, though, you get much more than deliciously crumbly, cakey base. Not only is the base old-fashioned style, it's chocolate-flavored. The flavor of this cake isn't overly sweet, and the chocolate itself is satisfyingly nostalgic. On top of that delicious chocolate base, things get even better as there's a yummy layer of chocolate icing that's a good option for chocolate lovers. Next, the Maple Frosted Donut. It's like getting a plate of fresh pancakes with your hot Dunkin' coffee and has a passionate fan base. It's so popular that some Dunkin' customers once created a petition to promote its return to stores. The petition's enthusiastic creator wrote of the donut, it helps me run on Dunkin'. Moving on, the Strawberry Frosted with Sprinkles Donut at Dunkin' consists of a plain base, strawberry flavored frosting, and sprinkles. As you may have guessed, we think that the strawberry frosting tastes great, and we're not alone in our admiration of this flavor. It has strawberry cupcake energy, and we appreciate this donut's frosting for sticking with what it does best as well. Overall, this is the best frosting flavor at Duncan. And now, for the coffee roll. This is one of the more unique pastry options at the chain. Instead of the typical fried dough with a hole in it, you're going to get a delicious swirl-shaped treat. While this may seem like an out there pick, we're not the only ones who appreciate the Dunkin' coffee roll. Blogger Ron Rosenbaum pondered, what is it about this pastry? Perhaps it's the subtle swirls of cinnamon sugar syrup sneakily insinuated into the interior spirals of the flying saucer swirls of the glazed cake. We agree that both the shape and the flavor of this donut are hard to beat. For something different, try the French cruller. This is a Dunkin' treat that looks like a golden swirled crown, and it's been described by the chain as in a category all of its own. Dunkin's customers seem to love French crullers as much as the chain itself. Once you've started, you won't want to stop eating the glazed donuts at Dunkin'. It has the right amount of fluffy, sweet, and savory. It's not a work of art so much that you wouldn't mind destroying it inside a cup of hot coffee. Now for the winner, Dunkin's Old Fashioned Donut. The pastry is an unglazed cake style base. It's usually a darker orange brown color compared to other donuts. The color makes it stand out as having a fried looking appearance. It doesn't usually look like old fashioned donuts from other pastry shops. Duncan describes it as having a mild vanilla flavor with a slight nutmeg finish. Each country has its own donut. Dunkin' Donuts crafts special donuts that reflect the local cuisine and culture for the countries in which it operates. For example, in Singapore, you can get wasabi cheese and seaweed cheese donuts. In some Asian countries, you can get mochi donuts, and in China, a dried pork and seaweed donut. And Duncan is considered a hot spot for South Korea. There are hundreds of stores, and the experience is a lot different from the American one. Patrons are allowed to pick the donuts off the shelves themselves, cups are paper, and the most popular drink is an Americano, which features hot water and a shot of espresso. Along with traditional donuts like glaze, there are black rice donuts, jalapeno sausage pie donuts, and bubble tea lattes. Arguably better known for its coffee than its donuts, Dunkin' is one of America's most popular coffee spots. The chain sells everything, from Dunkin' branded K-cups to cookie-flavored lattes. To keep quality high, Dunkin' Donuts employs two chief taste testers who oversee the entire 
air coffee operation. The Boston Globe profiled Helena Marsad, one of the two people that hold the highly caffeinated position, and revealed a slew of interesting facts about the coffee taste testing process. Coffee tasters are rigorous and taste up to 100 cups a day. If just one attribute in one cup of coffee is out of range, the entire cargo ship container that the sample cup came from will be shipped back to the roaster. It takes employees about three years to perfect their sensory sensitivities so they can detect specific scents in coffee. Inflation isn't a surprise, and we aren't going to get too mad at Duncan for the price hikes, but in the chain's earliest days, a cup of coffee sold for just 10 cents, and a donut cost 5 cents. A dime was common for many other drinks at the time too, like ordering a Coke at a diner. Changing the subject slightly, in March of 2018, just in time for marathon season, Dunkin' Donuts partnered with Saucony to keep Bostonians running by introducing limited edition Saucony and Dunkin' Kinevera 9 running shoes. Bye bye complicated foods, hello more coffee combinations to try. And last year, Dunkin' cut 10% of its menu, according to the Boston Herald, but in return, the company has since added new items, like the Beyond Sausage Breakfast Sandwich. Sounds intriguing. Anyway, apart from all the scandal, if you're craving a coffee and a donut for Dunkin' after listening to this, we can't blame you.